teams? There's no teams? How could you even use Windows without teams? You know, it looks like the end for Windows 10 coming up pretty soon here in October, and that's making a lot of us nervous, right? What are we gonna do? Uh, we have a few different options. We can either pay a small fee for the first year and then bigger fees for the next years if we wanna stay on the regular version of Windows 10, or we can move over to Windows 11. There's another option, and that's the one I've gone with myself on this computer. I've actually moved from Windows 11 24H2 over to Windows 10 LTSC. Now this is a 2021 version, and it's kind of like LTSC is like made for enterprises. What they do is they say, all right, it's 2021. Let's make an LTSC version. And what that means is there's going to be no more features. So they lock it. and you get basically the version of Windows 10 as it was in 2021. You also get security updates, but you don't get any new features. If they add a wonderful new mail app, you don't get that. If they add a, a wonderful new AI assistant, you don't get that. If they add a wonderful new feature to spy on you by looking through all of your photos and you know looking at your screen while you're using the computer, well, you're not going to get that. Isn't that sad? Sarcasm. So I hope to answer a lot of questions in this video because a lot of people look at LTSC and they're like, okay, if I move to that, what am I going to be missing out on? So I'm going to try to cover all of that in this video and just tell you all the things that are missing from you know LTSC that you're not going to get with regular Windows 10 and you're not going to get with Windows 11. So where do I get my LTSC keys? Well, I always get OEM keys because they're way less expensive than getting a retail key. Take a look at this nonsense right here. This is what Microsoft wants you to pay for a retail key. Now, LTSC keys, you can't even get them like this. They're mostly for like enterprise grade stuff and you get them through totally different means. However, there's one place that I go to get all of my keys and that's WhoKeys. So right here, we can go ahead and grab a Windows 10 LTSC 2021 key, which is what I'm gonna be using. And the price is gonna be lower than this because you know they've got a 20% off coupon code, but no, let's go ahead and add one of these to our cart right here by clicking on the cart. So it says 1481, let's try TS25, hit apply. And we're gonna get our LTSC key for only $11.11. .11. Now, if you're gonna be getting other versions of Windows, you can get Windows 11 Pro right here. So Windows 11 Pro, when you get to the checkout page, you can see TS25 brings that down from 3096 all the way down to 2322. You've got Windows 10 Pro. We also have Windows 10 Home and also Windows 11 Home. If you're using Office right now, there's that monthly subscription fee. If you grab it over here, it's just a one-time fee and you're gonna get 25% off this as well. So you can get Office 2019 or 2016. Just pick the flavor that has the stuff you need. I'm gonna go ahead and check out with this copy of LTSC right here and I'll show you exactly how to unlock your copy of Windows. I'm gonna click on submit order here, put in your credit card details right here. Hopefully no one steals my credit card information. All right. Success. All right, we're going to be redirected to our user center, but I'm impatient, so I'm going to go ahead and click on it right here. And then you'll see all of your keys and codes right here. So just click on View Keys, Codes, and then scroll down again and click on Get the Key. Right here is going to be your key. So just copy all of this right here. Open up your copy of Windows, and this will work on 10 or 11 or whatever. I've got 10. Click Start and type Activate, and you'll see Activation Settings. Click on that. Scroll down, and you'll see Change Product Key. Just click here and paste your product key in right there. Check it out. Activation, Windows is activated. Now we can come in and personalize, change our wallpapers, change our background colors. So have fun doing all that. All kinds of fun backgrounds now. Awesome. If you're wondering where OEM keys come from, well, last month I made a video, so I'll put a link to that down in the description. It talks about all the different places that OEM keys come from and why I always like to use an OEM key rather than just a regular retail key. So thanks to WhoKeys for sponsoring. And now let's take a look at LTSC. So let's go ahead and hop in and just go through the list. In the next video, I'll show you how I have my copy of Windows 10 LTSC set up and what I've done to install some alternate you know, things. But first off, let's just show you what you don't get. So you're not gonna get the Microsoft Store. If I could show my desktop here. All right, there's my nice Slayers uh, wallpaper. If you haven't seen it, go, go watch it. It'll feel like playing D&D with your friends back in the day. Anyway, let's just see what we got here. Store? No, no store. There's, there's no Microsoft Store. You can find and fix problems with the store, but that just brings up this thing. Troubleshoot, what's going on? So that's here, Windows Store apps. You can install all kinds of apps um, if you want to, and I'll show you how to do that in the next video. You don't have a modern calculator, but whenever you type calc, it brings up the old calculator. So in my opinion, that's kind of a, an upgrade. I'm very happy that we still have the old calculator right here. 
if you want to open up a JPEG. Sure, this picture of Shadowrun, it opens up in Paint. And some people are okay with that. Some people want like a photo app. But that's what you got. You got Paint. No modern app for that. If you're someone who used the Cloud Clipboard, well, you don't have that in LTSC. Never used that. That sounds awful. I don't want my copies to be on the cloud anywhere. So Cloud Clipboard and Timeline, things I've never used, but if you use them, just know that they're not included in LTSC. You're not going to get your mail app either. Uh, sticky Notes, gone. Not there. You can install Sticky Notes. You can install a lot of these things. The weather and the news and all that stuff, it's just its missing. No one's seen it. So you're not going to be able to get your weather news directly from Microsoft. Okay, next up, there's no Cortana, no AI, none of that stuff. Whatever the new one's called, just not here. Recall, whatever, that's not here either. So none of the AI stuff, none of the integrated nonsense. It's just not there. The Edge version is not the Chromium one, it's the older version. So when you install it, you're going to get the Internet Explorer version, not the Chromium Edge. I think it updates, but I don't use it anyway. I install, I don't know what, because Firefox is going evil. So we'll figure that out soon, but I'm on Firefox right now, which I might not be soon. So it does come with OneDrive, at least the things right there. That's interesting. It, it, it didn't install OneDrive, I don't think, when I first started up my system, but now OneDrive is here. So... I guess I'll need to remove that, but that's interesting. I didn't expect OneDrive to be there after all this. If you're someone who uses Windows Ink, uh, it's not there. You're going to need to use a third-party app for stylus touchscreen stuff. So those are the main things that are missing just from like a, I don't know, application standpoint and just using your desktop. Now I want to talk about your monitor, your display, and gaming. So first off, you're not going to be able to take advantage of Auto HDR. That's mostly a Windows 11 thing, not even Windows 10. The regular version can do the Auto HDR. And what that is, is that is a service that when you go into a game, if the game has HDR, it can just automatically turn on on your monitor without having to go into your display properties and do all that nonsense. Now, if you want to use HDR in your game, you'll have to enable it in the game or whatever. It's not going to automatically come on. Or you can right click right here and go to your display settings. Click on the display you want your HDR and then come down here and just say, yes, use HDR. So I'm not a huge fan of the way HDR looks on a lot of things. So depending on the quality of your monitor, you want to leave that on or off, but you have to do that manually. The other thing that you can't do right here uh, is do like dynamic refresh rates. Now with Windows 11 and I think some later versions of Windows 10, I'm not sure, but you can come in here and do a dynamic refresh rate. It'll save like a little bit of power or whatever, but right now this one's just going to update. However many times I said it to, I'm doing 143. I don't know why I'm not doing 230. I don't know. However, whenever you go into your games, you can set up, you know, G-Sync, FreeSync, whatever. All that stuff still works in games. And, in, you know, for me, it's more important to be using that stuff in games anyway. And you can also use like the NVIDIA app and the AMD stuff to set up all that kind of stuff if you want to. So you're just not going to be able to do it with the Windows settings, but you can, you know, Use it in your games and stuff all the same. Direct storage is not a thing on Windows 10, and it's not a thing on Windows 10 LTSC. It is a thing on Windows 11, and that's a gaming feature. Now, a lot of people get this wrong, including Linus from Linus Tech Tips. Don't know why I didn't do a little more research or look under the hood, but the way direct storage works is like this. When you're playing a game, Lots and lots of little files always need to be moving around. There's all kinds of little assets, and the files are tiny. Now, when you're using your computer, you've got all kinds of different things. Sometimes it's small files you're moving around. Sometimes you're moving around a big file. So the thing that's working in the background, I guess the API that talks to your CPU, needs to be able to just be kind of a general purpose and, you know, general purpose API that's tuned to just general use. You can just do whatever with it. But when you're in games, it's actually much faster if the API that's working behind the scenes is tuned specifically for lots and lots of small files. And that is what the direct storage is doing. It's not bypassing the CPU. The CPU still has to be involved. And that's where a lot of people get it wrong. We're not at that generation yet. We might get there in a generation or so when, you know, like all of the textures and stuff are just thrown straight to the GPU memory. Um, so that'll be fun. But no, we're not there yet. Now, what this is going to do in your games is going to make uh, loading scenes faster, which is nice. I don't think people are going to tell much of a difference between Windows 10 and Windows 11 at the moment. Um, you will be able to tell the difference when games really are, you know, like taking advantage of it because 
the game has to be written for that. It's DirectX, I think 12, and the game has to be written with this in mind. Now, right now you see games and they're made and they have all kinds of assets all over the screen, but sometimes, oh, it's moving. Chase me around, ha ha ha. So they've got all kinds of assets all over the screen. And if you look really close, a lot of times it's the same asset turned, you know, 50 different times. So you've got the same rock, but it's used 50 different times, but it's, you know, twisted and turned and you don't even notice it while you're playing the game. Now with the direct storage thing, you'll be able to have more unique assets all over the place and still have a smooth frame rate. There's that kind of thing that'll be nice, but um, overall, I don't think it's gonna matter that much for this generation, other than just loading into the scene in the first place. And remember, the games have to take advantage of it. Old games are not gonna support this, and some new games will, some new, some new games won't. It's not as revolutionary as you may think and it doesn't bypass the CPU. Now let's talk about the game modes. You do get game mode and LTSC 2021. You don't get the Xbox game bar, which I'm kind of okay with, but if you do use it, you can install it. So if you need it for screenshots or whatever, you got it. Let's just go ahead and take a look at game bar. Here we go, got our game mode settings. I got that turned on. And then we can go over here to our graphical settings and we actually have hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. I can turn that on, just need to restart my computer and we'll be good to go. So all that's available right here on LTSC. Other gaming stuff you might wanna take into consideration. Some of the anti-cheat systems may not work on LTSC because they're not gonna detect that as like a regular operating system. So some of those are not gonna work. I don't know which ones, I don't play those kind of games, but if you're playing competitive games, it's safest just to not use LTSC, use Windows 11 or Windows 10. The DirectX updates are usually the same as Windows 10 but there's a possibility they could lag behind a little bit. I don't know. Also, when it comes to just driver updates in general, if it works on Windows 10 so far, I've noticed that it's always been working. Hopefully we're not gonna get into a situation where, you know, in three or four years, stuff's only made for Windows 11 and doesn't really support Windows 10. Hopefully we're not gonna go in that direction, but I guess we'll see. Windows 11 does have a few more gaming things that you can toggle on, uh, but for me, even if I get a couple extra FPS doing that, I did some tests before and found out that some games are running a few FPS faster in Windows 11 with all that stuff turned on. Well, yeah, even if I'm getting all of that and I'm getting a few extra FPS, I'd honestly rather take a small hit and stay on this. I don't want all the nonsense. I don't want AI, I don't want the surveillance. I don't want recall. I don't want any of that stuff. Microsoft and I much prefer the interface here. It's simple, it gets out of my way so that I can use the operating system. I don't want this interface to be in my way. I want it to be conducive to my workflow and that's it. Your general Windows apps are just not supported on LTSC out of the box, but you can install them, but it doesn't come with, uh, you know, the store. Generally doesn't support all of the features that you would get on like the Windows Store if you install Windows 11. There are different types of packages, some that are encrypted, some that have certain settings like in-app purchases and stuff. You don't get that out of the box. Now you can install a lot of these things, and I can show you how to install the Windows Store if you need that but I generally like to just go and grab the apps or I see if there's a regular program version, like a regular EXE or MSI file. I look for one of those so I don't have to deal with the app unless I absolutely have to. So I don't have the Windows Store installed on here and I've realized I don't really need it because a lot of the things that I, that I was using, there's an NVIDIA app, uh, I've got an app for Ear Trumpet, a lot of that stuff you can install just using the PowerShell and a few commands and it's easy. So far, my experience with Windows 10 LTSC has been really good, better than I expected. I'm not really missing much of anything because a lot of times I can install third-party apps and that's gonna be in the next video. I'll show you the apps that I'm using for photos and just whatever else. There's not much else to, to worry about because a lot of it's taken care of. Last thing I wanna talk about are just your drivers. Now, usually it's about the same experience as installing Windows, meaning that you install it and you don't have to install any drivers to get the display on and to connect to the internet. That's usually, if you plug up ethernet, it usually just works uh, on most motherboard configurations and you know with most stuff. But I have had a couple computers where I messed around with Windows LTSC and you know, I got them to power on and everything and there were just no drivers for the ethernet. So I wasn't able to go online and download drivers. I had to go get a USB stick go to another computer get the drivers and bring you know bring them over to the computer. So before I even installed it on this machine, I put all the drivers for the motherboard and the graphics and everything. I put them all on a USB stick. I got everything up and running and it detected my network interface and everything was fine. So didn't even need the USB, but you know, just know that it's probably a good idea 
to put the drivers you think you might need or at least your network drivers on a USB stick before you install um, LTSC. So there you have it. All right, last thing I want to talk about. We still have a couple of these hoodies. I think there's like three left or whatever, but you can grab them while it's cold. Get them, come on. And then also, for everyone who watched, I'm going to put all the mice on sale half price for this month only. The coupon code is Happy Mouse. So head on over to epicpants.com, grab one of those, and I'll see you in the next video where I show you just how I have my uh, Windows 10 LTSC set up, just a few things I install, and uh, it'll be a bit of fun. So I'll see you over there.